All right, DC, who told you you could have fun? Here's the thing. Um, see, I'm afraid of bugs and um, guns and obnoxiously tall people and murder, and I can't be here. It's really cool. You guys seem ready to do battle and stuff, but full transparency, I've never done battle. I've just pushed some people and run away. Save one. What? Save one person. Uh, which one? Don't talk. Don't fight. Get in. Get one out. And, and then? You'll know. Justice League is DC's answer to Marvel's The Avengers, bringing the whole crew together in one movie. Batman, Wonder Woman, the rest of them coming together to mourn Superman's death and also fight a new alien invasion and what that means in their world. The lead up to this has been shaky at best for DC. Can they write the ship here? Well, here's five things you might want to know about Justice League. Oh, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and tears, and more tears have gone into making it a possibility. Justice League has arrived. Uh, is it any good? Well, we'll get there. Let's start with the good stuff. The rumors are true. It's fun. Uh, and I think one of the main reasons it's fun, we'll do this for point number one, The Flash. Ezra Miller's great. I really enjoyed his character. He does feel a little off when compared to the other characters who we know their dourness, especially Batman, uh, in that way. But he's so much fun. He had such a light presence. I think that's a good move to have him here. And I didn't want to like the Flash in this. I kind of like uh, Grant Gustin on the WB. I think he does a fine Flash. But you know what? I actually think this one works better because it's not. it doesn't have the, the baggage that you would have bringing the TV show in. So I admit I was wrong on that. Uh, I thought it would have been better to take him in. But I really like having Ezra Miller here. And I think he's part of what makes this an overall fun experience. But here's the thing, it's not just the Flash that works and makes it fun. Uh, aside from other characters working, which I think they do, I think the chemistry in this works really well. These guys together, in, especially as things move down to the second half of the movie without spoiling anything there, I really see how each piece fits within the whole. You can feel the work done by comic books through generations and TV shows through generations to understand this group of people and how they work together, how they fight together, how they're different how the chemistry works, and uh, I think it works in this movie. It works because each of them is individual and distinct, yet each of them has a purpose, and I think that suits the movie well overall. So if you're going for just kind of a fun movie where you like these characters, I think you might have a good time. I personally wanted more. I didn't love this movie. Let's get into the yellow stuff that might not bother you, but bothered me. Because I love The Flash and even Aquaman here, it's almost more of a dis disappointment that I didn't have a solo movie to get to know them better. I felt like there were missing pieces. I felt like this movie had to go to great lengths to do its exposition. There was always somebody explaining something about where somebody came from, what gave them their motivations, where with the Marvel movies, you had the solo movies to do that dirty work. The Captain America movie was everything you needed to know about Steve Rogers and everything that he was going through. And same with the other characters. Here you don't have that, and I feel like the movie feels its absence. Now, like I said, the characters are good and they work well together, but imagine how much deeper it could have been if we'd really understood all of that before getting into this movie. The other thing I think is a, a caution on this is the action. I think it could go either way for you. Is it cool? Yes, there's some really cool moments here in this movie. Is it good? No. It's too much, for me, it is too much all over the place. It's here, and then it's there, and then it's moving, and you don't know exactly who's doing what in some scenes, or, or why their powers are working the way that they're working in this battle, or who's fighting who and when they're fighting. It just seems very muddled. And part of that has to do with understanding these characters, maybe a little more, and just kind of getting used to them. And part of it, I think, it just has to do with poor action choreography. There are cool moments within confusing action scenes. And depending on which is more important to you, I think depends on where you'll come down on the action. But in my opinion, where this movie really suffers, and I think it's hard to argue with this, it's so thin, the plot story, all of that. The conflict is especially, let's talk about the conflict. You don't even feel it. 
The conflict motivation is so thin when you look at the villain and the superheroes and kind of why they're fighting each other and what's going on. There's not enough depth to it to really keep you invested. So because the motivation is thin, the resolution of the conflict is thin, meaning when it happens, you're not excited. You don't have that moment of euphoria where it's like, yes, they beat the villain, the good guys won, because it just didn't mean that much to me in the end. And therefore, the villain doesn't mean that much to me. It's just some blank face that they just have to overcome to become a team. Uh, and that's really all the movie is. So a paper-thin story really brings the movie down quite a bit for me. Overall, Justice League, though a step in the right direction with a lot of things, is still overall not an exciting movie. The story didn't capture me. I wasn't as involved in it as I wanted to be. Still, there's enough fun here and enough good character work here that I do bring it up to just, let's just go with a B minus. Thanks for checking out this Your Movie Friend review. We'll do the best ever challenge here in a bit. Before we do, uh, let's get to know each other better. Hit me up on Twitter, Aaron Dicer, A-A-R-O-N-D-I-C-E-R. -E we can also connect through the podcast, if you do the podcast thing. Sift Pop, S-I-F-T-P-O-P, -P, is the name of the podcast. Search for it wherever you listen to your podcast. Uh, we can also connect here on YouTube. Feel free to subscribe, leave comments, hang out, don't troll, I don't like it. I'm just kidding. You can troll if you want. I'll probably just ignore you. Uh, anyhow, YouTube. Great. Hang out with the community there. It's a lot of fun, uh, including doing the Best Ever Challenge, which let's get to that. Oh, and by the way, if you want to support on Patreon, I do appreciate that. Thanks to those who do that. Some pretty fun perks right at uh, three bucks a month or more. So if you want to check those out, go to patreon.com slash your movie friend. All right, now on to the Best Ever Challenge, where you name the best movie ever in a particular category. Also try to identify my choice. Um, let's go kind of abstract and generic here. Let's go with the letter J. Best movie ever that starts with the letter J. I'm going to have to go with, uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to get an answer here. Uh, if I do get an answer, you could say to me, you do eventually have best ever answers in your best ever challenge, don't you? That was a really lame line reading. I wish I could do that over, but I'm not going to. Take a guess at mine in the comments. Leave your choice there as well. And as always, here's a few extra seconds to hit subscribe. Just click my face. My Clark Kent face.